Supermash is the prime example of just because you can, it doesn't mean you should. And by this, I mean make absolutely everything completely randomised and crazy. Because sometimes you can get something that is absolutely gorgeous and fantastic, and sometimes you can get something that's an unplayable mess that breaks the game entirely. And so, Super Mash's main point of sale, and its main unique selling point, is both its boon and its downfall at the same time. And I've spent months diving in and out of this game, trying to work out how I feel about it, and I still don't really know. So this review is going to be all over the shot. I apologise in advance. In Super Mash, you play as a video game store manager who has found this like magical game console. And the idea is that you're able to put in a couple of consoles together and smash genres of games together. And then by putting in additional stickers, you can put in permutations to kind of randomize the things wildly. Now, the different genres are platformer, action adventure, shoot 'em up, Metroidvania, stealth, and JRPG. So they all largely revolve around 2D sprites doing something. Um, quite a lot of them in the action adventure platformer realm. But because you have the complete ability to smash all of this different stuff together throughout various collectibles of completing other randomized games beforehand and earning coins, you can really go out of your way to make a crazy mashups. So it could be that you take your shoot 'em up plane into a platformer and they have to bounce around on the platforms but they still shoot out everywhere so that's a really good weapon. It could be that you take your platforming character into a JRPG but they can't do anything with it. Or it could be that your JRPG character ends up in a shoot 'em up but you're just stabbing Ford. <laughs> um, all of these different things can be mashed together in weird and wonderful ways and you can unlock specific cards that can be reusable so that you can start to, in one of five slots, narrow down and filter like specific things so that you can have, say, like the same music always every time. Or you can lock in a character so no matter what type of game that it spits out at you, you can have that same character throughout. And so it's up to you over the course of time just how random and how structured you want your games to be but it will always spit out a very short and sweet anywhere from 2 to 25 ish minutes of a game that you can play now these games vary wildly in their quality some of them are just a couple of platform jumps and then you reach the end and that's because you've asked for a short easy game you could ask for a very short hard game and it will just have tons of enemies flying at you um, and it will give you like the crappiest weapon possible so that you then can't do anything with it. Um, some of them can be very long and complex, but because of the randomization elements, they all just kind of feel like cobbled together bits of platforming or bits of shooting with like repetitive waves where it's gone, I'll have wave five, seven and nine, six, two and eight in. And then the next time around, it'll be like two, six, eight, seven, four, nine. So you spot clumps of game just being assembled around itself. So you get very familiar with what's put out in front of you. Now, some of this stuff is quite funny <laughs> because you get weird and wonderful matchups which kind of make you go, what? Uh, and part of the fun is then being able to equip bugs <laughs> so that you can then cheat and make your way around the game. But then cheating always gives you like a weird offset effect as well. So you have to kind of juggle whether or not you're going to glitch your way through the game um, and then cause more problems for yourself later on or not, which is quite a good way of trying to get Super Mash out of a hole because quite often it will spew out unplayable or unfinishable games. And this is its biggest downfall. Not only are the levels kind of quite bland because they're just bits and bobs of like predetermined chunks of levels just chopped together over and over and over again, some of them are damn right unfinishable. The entrance or exit, sorry, will be blocked away. There'll be an enemy that won't spawn that you have to kill, but it doesn't actually spawn. So you're just stuck around a level for 10 minutes waiting for you to get a game over. It can be that um, you need to collect a certain power up, but the power up doesn't spawn. And it doesn't seem to have like proper parameters to actually give you winnable end states. 
Um, and the amount of times that this happens isn't insignificant. So I would say probably one in six or seven levels are unplayable or unfinishable, should I say. They're playable, but they're not finishable. And that means that you just waste time. And so you back out and then you have to kind of go and try and make the same thing again. The problem is, is that a lot of your dev cards or the things that you save up to kind of go, I want a big weapon or I want this character or I want this background music. Most of the time they are one use only and so they disappear. And so it starts to make you resent the game because you're burning through all of your collectibles for unwinnable situations for no particular reason. And it feels like the game should be better structured so that you don't end up in those situations over and over and over and over again. Now the main thrust of this game revolves around you being able to um, collect various different stickers into your sticker book and solving um, your customers who want to come in and get custom games to buy. So a customer will come in and they'll say, I want a hard JRPG um, game. And so you can have a JRPG and you can match two JRPG consoles or cartridges, sorry, together and keep it fresh. But it could be that they want, I want something new that's a platformer. So then you would mix up like a platformer with a Metroidvania, for example, and then you'd get something there. Um, it could be that they're like, I want a long stealth game. So then you just have to make sure that you choose long stealth, but then you could make it really easy and then you get very bored for 20 minutes trying to complete the game. Once you complete the game, you can then give it to the customer and then they give you cash, which then allows you to get more dev coins and more variations of things that you get to play with. This all goes along until you've satisfied enough customers to be able to fill up your sticker book and then you can kind of challenge the boss of that genre um, and therefore continue on making the world better one game at a time. It all kind of hangs together okay. Um, I wished it, it kind of looks like you should be able to do more management stuff of your actual uh, game shop as well, but you don't. You, it's all surface level, just nice, pretty graphics. All the gameplay is inside the randomised games themselves, and that's okay. But yeah, just it feels like you're wasting your time through laboured, repetitive sections of the same game over and over and over again. And half, well, not half the time, but one sixth of the time, it's unfinishable anyway. So then you go, what was I doing that for? So as a result, Super Mash does not appreciate or respect your time. And so I struggle ultimately to recommend this to many people, but I love the concept and the idea. And so that's why I feel totally torn because there are moments where you get like complete craziness and you just think, this is ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> But those flashes of brilliance get more and more sparse the further you get into the game and the more aggravating and more repetitive the game becomes because it wants you to do longer and harder levels where you just do the same old thing over and over and over and over and over again that you've been doing in shorter spurts for hours beforehand. Written review will be over on highplanegames.com. I hope that was informative. As I say, I feel really torn between this because I love the concept and there are flashes of brilliance here. But my God, doesn't it make you slog for it? <laughs> you guys take care. Catch you soon. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.